Hey guys, welcome to a live. We're going to be talking with Kara from Moonstruck Crystals tonight. And there she is. Let me just grab her, invite her. Oh, I know that we are still in Mercury in the Gatorade. Up, oh, yay! <laughs> You know, Mercury and retrograde, you just never know what you're going to get with these damn lives, let me tell you. And I'm literally sitting at my vanity because that's where I that's where I sit when I do these lives because I have, like, better lighting. And I'm, like, putting my makeup away because I, like, made a mess this morning. <laughs> and I didn't put anything away. I was like, well, that's convenient. So let's clear the, clear the landscape. How are you? I'm good. Yes. You look gorgeous as usual. Oh, as my usual. God. As you do, you're, I, we, we should do another live where you give us the secrets to having fashion colored hair that always looks bright and beautiful because that is a, a very major feat. I wash it once a week. That's it. I'm, a once a week for myself, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Only way to go. So welcome to our author talk, author, creator talk. So you guys, everybody that's joining in, this is meant to be like an interactive chat. I'm going to start just like asking you questions. It's really just like we're going to have a conversation. And then as everybody makes comments, we're going to we're gonna talk about, you know, we'll call them out and answer questions, ask questions, all that good stuff. But so my name is Dina. We've never talked face to face, but we have talked on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Love, we love your decks at the shop. I don't know how long we've been carrying them, but like a good amount of time. Yeah, I'm gonna say, yeah, at least a time. year, right? Yeah, definitely at least a year. We started with the affirmations, right? Affirmations came out first, mm -hmm. and then the minute there was a tarot, we're like, well, we have to have that. I mean, why would you do both? And now you're you got another project in the pipeline, which is so exciting. Yep, I have one card left, and I'm finally done. I've been working on it since November. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So before we talk about your new project, tell us about how you got into creating these decks and what was like your divine spark of inspiration. Um, so I was actually just selling crystals for a couple of years and I, I started to miss art again because I used to be a graphic designer before, but it's, I started to dread my job because I was constantly doing it for other people. I didn't really do it for myself. So I lost my passion for it along the way. And then I was really starting to miss it. So I'm like, oh, I'll start with like a, a crystal calendar and see how it goes. And it actually took off. So I'm like, okay, what can I make that's a big project that'll take me a long time? Like, cause I love big challenges and big <laughs> projects like that. And I'm like, I know an affirmation deck. No one has made a crystal affirmation deck. I looked all over Etsy, couldn't find anything and all over the internet. And so I'm like, I'll, I'll just, that, that's, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so, and it uh -huh. kind of just took off from there. So the affirmations are really beautiful. The way, what I, what I love about it is that you really don't need, you don't need any guide. You don't need anything. You really just work with what's said on the deck. Um, First of all, like the attention to detail in your design and the bells and whistles that you put into these decks is, it's not like your average type of deck. I mean, the hollow or the gold, depending upon what the silver I know is newer, Yeah. but you know, this is the silver aura edition of the crystal affirmation. I mean, they're just absolutely stunning. And even like the crystals themselves, like here's rhodochrosite, like you really do have the elements of the crystals come through with your design, which is so beautiful because there are so many times where I'll see them and I'm like, oh, it's really, really good. Yep. <laughs> but each card basically has the crystals affirmation. So you could use it like to get like what crystal stepping forward for me for the day. And what works really pretty is maybe you don't have every single one of these crystals, but you could still work with their energy and see like what the message is for you, um, whether you have that crystal or not. So, I mean, inquiring minds want to know like what's your favorite card in this affirmation deck? Do you have a favorite baby? Um... For the old ones, I would say Malachite. 
Okay, I feel like I just saw Malachite. And no, I'm sorry, Pink Amethyst. Pink Amethyst is definitely my baby. That took me forever to make. That one okay. was a pain to draw. <laughs> I mean, look at the Labradorite though. Yeah, that one too. <laughs> Pink and that, though, with all those like swirls and everything. Oh my God. Th that right, took me, those that for, took me at least a day. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking for pink out. I mean, Opal's, but she, Opal's so pretty. Opal is so pretty. I, I might have, have it here. Oh yeah. Pink amethyst. Yeah. yeah the, 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 like the little orbicular sort of. Yes. Oh, look at that. You guys. <laughs> It's actually based part. off of a real pink amethyst that I sold that I regret selling. <laughs> the one that got away. Don't yep. we always have the one that gets away? I know. So sad. I mean, optical calcite, like how you got the rainbow in there. So pretty. Um, really, really gorgeous. So Thank you. you make the you you make the Oracle deck. Now, when when was Crystal Affirmations launched? Somebody said they got the deck from me um winter of 2022 so yeah it's been it's been some time yeah so it's been since may of 2021 i believe so it'll okay be so may anniversary very very soon <laughs> yay oh the halite is beautiful with like the cubes that's Thanks. really good. Yeah, really good. Um, so, okay, so it's coming up on the anniversary. And then you were like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a tarot deck. <laughs> now, now I, I I, always said, like, like we're not going to make this conversation be a royal rumble. But I'm like, let's talk about how you pulled these correspondences, because that's, that's a lot of work. Oh, yeah. The, the doing the correspondences at least took me like two months. I just kept going yeah. back and forth on a bit on a bunch of them. You should see my notes in my phone. It was it was chaos. So, <laughs> so right now, here's something interesting. My question for you is, when all is said and done, are you like, oh my god, I forgot this, or it should have been this, or are you like, or are you like, I put it to bed. Yep. Nope, there's been plenty of times after it was been done months later, like, I'm like, oh, shit, I should have put this one in with this one and that one. Yeah, you still, you know, are your biggest critic, so. It's, it, it's, I mean, it's such a, it's such a beautiful, like, so here's that pink amethyst again and the high priestess, you guys. So cool. So what I, so I really, I really do appreciate, you know, in this deck, I'm trying to, like, get some different... Some different cards here of all different um of all, all different like i don't want to just do the mate the major i want to pull some some all different cards so people can see hello help okay so it's not just i like that it's like not just like a pip deck you know like and you could have easily done that i really do think that like you let the crystal sort of speak and take center stage but like you have a little bit more going on than just have it like as a pip oh you pulled the high priestess yesterday in that deck right oh my gosh I'm cute. Oh, thank yeah it, it's such... <laughs> thank you for having it <laughs> and I, I listen everybody loves this i mean it's beautiful this is beautiful so so let's talk let's talk about like let's talk about we actually danielle and i my business partner we actually just did a um, a podcast production day yesterday. We have a podcast, and um, the second episode that we shot yesterday, we were talking about um, like difficult cards of the tarot, specifically the sword suit. Mm -hmm. So I think like what I can imagine is how like you have these difficult cards, but like crystals really aren't difficult. No, not at all. Right. So then like, how do you approach, say, like a card like the Ten of Swords or the Three of Swords? Because there's no, there's no crystals that cause heartache, but there's crystals that can help. Heal heartache. Yeah. Right. So I, for the Three of Swords, I think I did what? Kunzite, right? Kunzite? Kunzite. I can never, Kunzite, Kunzite. <laughs> Kunzite. 
Moonside, it's like a potato potato moment. I just pretty sure saw I it. Put that one for it. But I, yeah, I mean, it's just about, I have the buck. Yeah, <laughs> same. I have it right here too. <laughs> I think I did, yeah. right? Pretty sure I, I did. Am, I am looking to get to. Got to fact check. So where, where is it? Here it is. Hello. I need. Yep. Oh, reading glasses. <laughs> yeah, so I chose that because of, you know, emo emo eh, emotional healing and it heals your heart. And yeah, <laughs> I wanted yeah. it to be more of uh, the tarot. Like, when you pick a tarot card, like, what crystal will actually help you with that card? That's kind okay. of the mindset I was going in with it. So now, did you distinguish crystals between like say like a major arcana card versus like a minor arcana card like were you like saying like okay like did you approach them differently or i wanted to have the most popular crystals as the major arcana cards like citrine amethyst mm -hmm. which is the moon the sun uh quartz clear quartz is the magician like i wanted the main ones that people collect to be the major arcana okay. because I, I okay. think they're, they're the most powerful yeah absolutely and like the most the most sort of like well well known exactly oh yeah here's the swords. so here's the three of swords with the kunzite in the middle and i love how the sword is piercing through the kunzite so beautiful and look at this is this is inter this is an interesting one. Um, the ametrine for justice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is all about decision making, and mm -hmm. so, and that's one of my favorite crystals too, actually. <laughs> really? Okay, yeah. I was gonna ask you, like, what's one of your favorite? Like, look at eight of pentacles. Fluoride is actually one of my oh, favorite really? crystals. Like, I am a <laughs> girl for fluoride. That's the last card that I'm working on tonight for my Oracle deck. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? So, Rai says it also makes it easier to memorize because you see those crystals so often. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. Yep. And I think, like, what's so cool is, like, maybe you don't know, for example, the, um, what exactly like the king of wands signifies right but like you do or but maybe if you're more of like a crystal person you understand like the energy of amber right like that energy of like that full sort of like solar light like just like really bright solar energy yep. so i think that's what makes it really cool is that um a lot of us that are like crystal fans which I'm assuming if you're in this deck, you would be a crystal fan. You can, you can really sort of like be like, okay, I understand. Like nine of swords, lapidolite, like no better, no better correspondence. Because like I think after a nine of swords moment, although I think I think lapidolite could also sit in ten of swords. Like I I, I imagine you like being like, do I put it with yeah. the ten or do I put it with the <laughs> which one is worse, right? But like so cool, so 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 cool. And look at and look at the smoky quartz as the tower. So like, don't worry if your world's falling apart. We Talk got you. <laughs> yeah. And that's so the little, And like, you literally have like a moss agate as the world, which is so cool. It's just it's just like really really well done, and you know we we really so talk to us like talk to us about self publishing. Talk to us about like this process because like. It, it really is like so amazing that like you are producing this like you're like this is like crazy like this is like and like it's it's like i know people that like have created their own decks ain't none of them look like this by the way like <laughs> mine is a little messed up but on this deck when you first open it there's like all stars like if you put it back in order you'll see like all stars along the edge of the of the foil and this I think is I a gold have mine in order uh, yeah Oh my God, it's so cool. But like the thing is you have to use them because they're so amazing, but like it's so cool when they're in order and like you see all those stars. Oh my God, it's like amazing. <laughs> like tell us about the process because like you really, like you really 
definitely like you spared no no expense in putting this together like with the with the design elements so like how is that how is that process like so um First, I just went on Google and looked up deck printers, got a bunch of quotes from multiple companies that I found. And uh, a lot of them did send me like sample books. So mm -hmm. you can kind of pick the foils you want and everything. And one of the, one company had those stars and I'm like, oh my God, this is it. Like, I love this. I've never seen this before. And I had them print me like a sample deck to see how it would come out. And it came out beautiful obviously <laughs> yeah. I mean not to my own horn but <laughs> Ms. Um, so I placed the bulk order um my first order I placed around like 500 because I didn't know how it was gonna go but then my second order it went to a thousand and then my third my we're up to five thousand right now my wow <laughs> I know we need a reorder because like I've been out on TikTok shop for a long time and it's so funny I do really appreciate everybody because so many people are like do they know you're selling yeah. this like, well yes yes where am I getting them from yeah but, I mean there are so there is such a counterfeit problem mm -hmm. out there with decks like it's it there's there's such a counterfeit problem so if like you're seeing a deck like this listed on a website not for the retail price that Kara sets then like know that something shady is going on yeah like they're stealing creators yep. art the name of the deck so this is crystal struck tarot the one that i have in my hand is the gold but there also is in silver like a silver aura and then the, there's crystal affirmations i think it is in gold and silver but i think I don't even know what I have in stock. I <laughs> I just have silver right now. I and I don't know what I have in tarot. It's not a lot. Yeah. Um, we definitely need to re up because like we blew through everything. Um has TikTok been going like nuts for you on there too? Like Yeah, TikTok, we've been we've been like <laughs> in a little bit. We 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 started not that we're complaining, but we started something with this like blind date with a deck and blind date with a book thing, and it's it's been it's so much fun, but it's so labor intensive because we're wrapping every single book and then stuffing it with all these things, and then we're tying it with twine and then oh stamping it with a stamper. It's so much, and like you know, with TikTok, you have the turnaround time that you have to maintain like that three day turn and you have to like i find with tiktok if you sell out and then add and then sell out and add like it feeds the algorithm better than like having too much up I took your not. advice i took your advice and started doing that it works, <laughs> right it, it works. totally it like definitely works it totally works that instead of having like you know putting all 5,000 up, like just keep releasing them and then letting it stay sold out for a little bit and then re-releasing them. But it's, it's, I mean, and your box that you ship these things in is gorgeous. I'm like, oh my God, that brat, how much are you paying? Like those boxes are beautiful. I'm like she's giving us, making us all look like, uh, like we're like sent it in like garbage, like in our like brown Uline box. Like, do you have a box that you could show people? Like your yeah. box? Mailing box. Her mailing boxes are insane. They're insanely beautiful. So one just got uh, shipped back to me because the girl put the wrong address on it. So I mean, foil boxes, you guys. Like, I don't know if I could, I don't know how many of those you're printing at a time to get those boxes, but those boxes have got to be at least $2.50 each. They are not. They're cheaper. Shut up. <laughs> um, Oh my God, they're gorgeous. They're so beautiful. It's actually, the price is, I think, half that. So wow. it worth, it's worth it. Yeah, but still, like, you guys, so half 250 would be like a dollar and a quarter. But keep in mind, it's like a brown box same to fit. Price. A, it's almost the same No, price. a brown box on Uline is 40 cents. What are you talking well, about? Well, the white, I used to get the white ones. I think they were like around 70 cents because yeah, I wanted holding, the white ones. Puff boxes are more, but like yeah. the brown regular ones, they are definitely, they're definitely way less. But like that's gorgeous. Like attention to deal is insane. That's that's totally insane. Rye said, "Oh my, I kept the box. Keep my I always in. keep. I, every time I get a pretty box like this too, I want to keep it. So <laughs> I know it's so beautiful. When I saw you doing like a pack and order with me on TikTok, I was like, 
Really? <laughs> really? We we actually did print our own um, padded envelopes mm -hmm. with like full step and repeat with a galaxy background. And for us, that was cheaper than buying like the metallic bubbles from Uline. But we're in a predicament because we stock literally two, three, four, five different padded envelope sizes. We stock maybe a dozen different cardboard box sizes. Mm -hmm. So like, it's just like, it's just too much. It's too yeah. Much. <laughs> it's too much, it's too much materials for us to like be able to customize all of them. So you use the pouch to carry crystals in your purse, right? Says, oh, do you have a branded pouch also? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Do you stamp them? <laughs> we hand stamp ours. We're still, we're still like, We've been hand stamping pouches for five years now. I think it's time to get them printed. I mean, they're cheap. So I might hit you up and be like, where are you your pouches I'll printed? Gotta, <laughs> yeah, we gotta we gotta pull the trigger on that. Damn. Okay. So let's um anybody have any questions? Any questions about the cards? Any questions about the process? Um, talk to us about what made you get into being a crystal in crystal sales and how was that do you still sell crystals are you sort of like out of it like tell us about that journey i do it once in a blue moon but for i feel like it's just gotten so trendy and like everyone's doing it now whereas like a year ago i would have like 100 people watching live sales but now i get like maybe 15 people if i'm lucky yeah and i'm sure you can relate sometimes <laughs> the i, I like think it. yeah the crystal live it's it's gotten, it's really gotten um, much harder. Like it's, it's really interesting. So we, we've been doing crystal live sales. I think we started like the beginning of April, 2022. So mm -hmm. right when we had to close the shop for COVID is when we started doing live sales and like not a lot of people were doing them yep. at the time. Um, and then we were really lucky because we already had like our e-commerce infrastructure set up and we had like the whole thing. So we just started doing that, but we were at the time going live every single night, even though we weren't selling every single night we, during COVID from really pretty much like the beginning of April through the middle of June, we went live every single night at 8.30 PM. Mm -hmm. It was what, like seven, Seven days a week for like that run of months on Instagram real life. <laughs> That's crazy. It was, but like, what the hell else were we doing? Yeah, we were all, true. What, what were we doing? And we would like, we would like do something like this. We would do a ritual. We would just talk about angels. Or like we were, and then we would once a week we would, or twice a week we would do a sale. It definitely becomes oversaturated. Um, I only watch Abbeville and a friend who lives on the beach. Yeah, it's. I mean, there's a lot, and I think. I think like it became trendy and it became like, listen, when people see that there's money to be made somewhere, they're like, mm -hmm. they're, they're running, they're running yeah. towards it. Right. So yeah, but I started in a 20, uh, April of 2019 that I started doing live sales shortly after, like in the summer at some time, but back then it was way different. Like yeah. there wasn't nearly as many crystal shops. Like I was just doing it for fun. I was still working my full-time job at the same time. Yeah. Then eventually when I started making these products, like I said, I started with a calendar. That's when I was able to uh, leave my job. That's when COVID hit. So yeah, and I left my job and was doing this full time and was able to sustain a living. And then I'm like, oh, I don't really need the crystals that much anymore. Like it's starting to die out. Like nobody's really watching my live sales anymore. Like, so I just went all in on the products really. I mean, I do crystals once in a while here and there, but I mean, I would love to get back into it more, but yeah. like I said, it's too oversaturated now. So I'm just kind of waiting for it to like, yeah, down a little. <laughs> there's definitely a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of sellers and it's, it's wild. Cause I think like when, when we opened the shop, we up, we opened the shop in, um, November of 2018. And I think at that point on Long Island, there were like maybe three shops. There was um, like three or four. It wasn't really crazy. There was a shop that had been there for like, like a bazillion years that really isn't a crystal shop, like a spiritual shop. 
then there was like another shop and like there really wasn't anything and now like i sort of there were so many shops mm -hmm. and it's interesting because like in the beginning like everybody was a crystal shop and now they're all becoming witch shops because yep. <laughs> like now they're like oh now we have to do spell work because like they're, like i'm like oh my god you guys like just like pick something that you yeah do, you do, <laughs> like naturally that's like your thing <laughs> It's a little crazy. Yep. A little, a little, <laughs> That's why I'm kind of just like take going all in on the whole like art thing, the decks and everything. And I started making apparel. Like I see like <laughs> your little like that you just made apparel, and I like love your cats. You have to grab one of your cats. <laughs> which, like oh my god, look. This is her. <laughs> is she? Is she? Will she kill you in your sleep? That's why she has the knife in her mouth. Like uh, is she like, that much of a princess? <laughs> She's, she's sassy. <laughs> I used to have a cat that used to sleep on my chest at night, and if I moved, it would, like, smack me in the face. <laughs> That's what I love about them. <laughs> I know. They give you the business for sure. It's so funny. So apparel. The, so the Oracle deck, talk to us more about the – so when do you think the Oracle deck will be launching? Because I know, like, you're just finishing it up. So, like, obviously there's, like, a production run, and then you have to get it back here. And if you're getting thousands, that means they're sending it on the ocean. They're not flying it to you. Um, I usually get some airships. Okay. I can do pre-orders. But um, I would say – because I still need to write the guidebook. That won't take me that long. Um, I'll probably be done within the next week or two. Finalize everything. Takes like, yeah, about a month. So what, what's today? April 10th, 9th? Yeah. So I would say probably towards the end of May, just to play safe. The tarot deck exciting. anniversary. <laughs> That's exciting. That's so exciting. So now how many cards does the Oracle deck have? 65. Wow, that's a big oracle deck. Yeah, I drew, drew every, every, some crystals um, are from the old decks, but I redrew everything, like complete, everything's all fresh. Wow. <laughs> Any new, new crystals that you were like, you know what, didn't make it into tarot, didn't make it into the affirmation. What are some of those crystals that they could like expect to see? Moldavite is definite we had to have it this time um oh my god i can't even remember off the top of my head <laughs> uh watermelon tourmaline okay um what else i can't, I can't remember right now <laughs> moldavite is a big one yeah. okay <laughs> okay i mean watermelon tourmaline is beautiful so that's amazing um let's see i'm like i'm like looking to see um i have your your uh, tarot deck in front of me. Like, is anything like jumping out at me that I don't, I don't see? Hold on. Like I this, like, like how am I over 78 cards? I don't know, but that's okay. <laughs> I wish I had my iPad right now. I would show you the, some of the designs. If you want to wait a second, I'll go grab it. Yeah, we would <laughs> love to. We would love to see it. All right, cool. I, you guys, I, feel like I could look at this deck. I feel like I could look at this deck forever and literally like just like so clever night night of swords, carnelian, charging, like that energy, you know, queen of wands, a puff light. Like look at how cool. I just love, 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 love. I'm in love with the opposite optical calcite i am in love with your optical calcite art both decks like thank you <laughs> love anything with the rainbow so oh my ring light here's aqua or a quartz <laughs> that's beautiful with invigorate yeah i've been spending every day doing these let's pick another random one uh let me turn the color back on. I turned it off. This is the Moldavite. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Beautiful transformation. What's the keyword? Is it metamorphosis? Yep. Beautiful. <laughs> so, so gorgeous. That I'm trying to I mean Moldavite will do it for you. Moldavite will bring you a metamorphosis. Yep. Oh yes. <laughs> Whether you want it or not. Trying to you're getting what was my favorite one? I really like this flower agate one. 
Let me turn the color back on. Oh my God. <laughs> what? What's the, what's the word there? Fluorescence. It means to, to grow. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> Beauty. I love that. I love, and flower, flower agate is actually, it's interesting. I don't, it went through a moment where it was so, so popular. I don't know if it's like sort of like taking a little bit of a dip, but it was like the most popular for like the longest time. Yeah, I haven't really seen anybody selling it recently, like as much as they used to. Yeah, remember how popular it used to be? It used to be like gangbusters. Yep. <laughs> Everybody was like, like all about it. People would come be like, do you have flower agate? Do you have flower agate? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I honestly like, if you guys don't, have these decks like I don't know what you're sleeping on because I love the hanged one as how light and what's really good about this deck too is that it really isn't like gendered in a way so it takes out like all that stuff which one's that oh, yeah. heroes course <laughs> oh my goodness so pretty I love it it's Thanks, really Lulu for the word we are so we is the train in the new deck Dara wants to know yeah it is I mean Citrine is such a happy stone and like, you know, everybody wants abundance. Let's be, let's be real. <laughs> so like, how do you kick Citrine out of the deck? Yeah, I couldn't. We had to include so a lot of the old ones because they, they're just, you know. <laughs> well, you, we, so we, go to them, we go to them, we use those energies for a reason, right? Like, because they're amazing and their energies are great. So like, you can't necessarily leave them out and I think have you ever like thought like I want to use this crystal but like it's harder to find like I know I think um oh my god I know it's one of the court cards I think now I'm getting so confused I just saw it I know you have alexandrite in the tarot deck mm -hmm. alexandrite is such a beautiful crystal but like not one that most people can even buy or yep. find <laughs> or afford <Yep. laughs> <laughs> right so are there any other stones like that where you, where you like really had to stop and think like it's sort of perfect, but like, like, I don't know, like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know if you, if you thought of that because it makes me sad that I can't afford Tanzanite. <laughs> I mean, not Tanzanite. I, I, I really, Tanzanite. I was about to not include those, but I couldn't really find any others that I kind of vibed with that made sense. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the Alexandrite. If you guys don't know Alexandrite, is a color changing stone it's very very expensive like when you look at it from different angles or different lights i think it can go, it goes like what like red to green um and it could go like a purple to a red like it's actually like the coolest thing a lot of times people will sell like mystic topaz as alexandrite it's much more affordable and i don't even necessarily know if mystic topaz naturally actually color changes or if they just they treat it in some way to get it that way, right yeah, yeah treat it. It. i mean it's still cool as hell yeah. but like it's not <laughs> natural like that natural color changing there's actually a couple of garnets that do that as well um but alexandrite i think alexandrite is more expensive than like diamonds if you get a big enough piece mm -hmm. it's like really <laughs> Them. it's really really expensive i've like we go to the gem and mineral show the the big ones the denver the tucson i've not seen alexandrite anywhere and if they have it they're it's like underneath the counter and yep. it's like they're <laughs> like only bringing it out for the people with like the big box yep. or something so yeah i mean it's it's this is such i this is such a project. Like I can't, I can't even believe. Let's talk about death. Look at death as obsidian, and then you have. I want to do. Hold on, and then you have the devil as labradorite. Talk to me about why you chose one of my favorite crystals known to man, labradorite, to be associated with the devil. This might be one of the only bones I have to pick with you. <laughs> Because it's all about transformation out with the old and with the new, you know, yeah. and that's what the card's about. Yeah. But that's why yeah. I love it, right? <laughs> I mean, I love, look at how cool he is, though. We actually just bought these when we were in Tucson, and 
it feels like we were just in Tucson yesterday. And when I tell you we got two of these and it's carved and it's still in the crate and we have not even unboxed them and we've had them in our possession. I have since. the skulls all over my living room. Like, I just love them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, love them. Love them so much. But no, it's the, the, lab, the, the Labradorite is so cool. I... I just, I don't know. Guys, give us, give us some questions. Give us some questions. Ask Kara a question. There's like not many times where you have somebody that is not only the deck creator, but also self publishes. Like that's like a big deal. Like it, has anybody called you and said, we want to pick up your deck? I'm so uh, Like bigger stores yeah, so or anything? like like publishing houses like have any publishing houses no no <laughs> just a lot of uh just a lot of local shops i mean i sell all over the world i'm in france germany australia like that's they're amazing everything. that's amazing danielle that's my business partner she wants to know what's your favorite card what's your favorite tarot card and what's your favorite card from the affirmations I think you said the pink amethyst was your favorite in crystal affirmations, but yep. what's your favorite in the tarot? Oof, that's tough. <laughs> oh my god, but look at this one. Which one? Which one? I mean, tattoo of it. Where is she? There she is. <laughs> it, that's that? actually my queen of wands. Yep. That is that your birth card? Uh, it is a Leo card. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I I love that. I, I pulled the Ten of Pentacles because I think this is just beautiful. Thanks. It's my birthstone too, of course. <laughs> Yo, look at that. Will you will you do a love deck? I have both decks from you, but I want a love deck. Geek with bling. <laughs> Maybe after this Oracle deck. Listen, put it put in the future the future plans. There's I have to tell you like there are so many love stone cards. Like there's so many green, like love stones, like so many green, so many pinks. Like it's definitely, you could be definitely be doable. Yeah, absolutely. You could throw heartache cards there too. You throw some Apache tear in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, um, so was it hard to pick crystals for the decks without being biased? Yes. <laughs> absolutely. Do you have a crystal that you don't like? That like, because I have a couple of crystals that I don't like. Where that I do like. Where you're uh, like, uh, but okay. I would say I don't really care for red jasper. I don't care for howlite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, any pretty much adventuring. I mean, I know I'm probably gonna get killed for that one, but. <laughs> Anything that's really mass produced in China, because I've just seen it so many yeah. times, and you just, just start to hate it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wonder too, like some of the crystals, like, so for example, I have the 10 of wands and you have Caribbean calcite and you really have the texture of that Caribbean calcite in there beautifully. But then like a crystal like green adventurine or a crystal like red jasper, where it's like micro crystalline, so you don't get any variation like and really like red jasper forms like in mass like yeah like <laughs> what do you put what are you doing with it right like so i i mean i just like even just like from a graphic design standpoint could see where you'd be like eh. yeah, yeah like, that's not their purpose <laughs> fluorite uh, that's why i say fluorite and malachite to draw last because i know i'm gonna have the most fun with them so oh. <laughs> The ma malachite and then like what kind of malachite do you even pick because now like you see there's so many different beautiful like more fibrous or like mm -hmm. more more like you know with the beautiful like the patterns and the orbs and then there's like the um like the oh my god it's escaping me there's just like the the malachite like the velvety malachite <laughs> yeah. you see i so, so for the uh, orb patterns, those are my favorite. You like the orbs, <laughs> okay? I mean, I I'm looking at your emerald. Okay, look here's the flower agate with the orbs. Yep. Look at so, so beautiful. But look at the sodalite. I mean, for a crystal that's sort of like I feel like you really that like came through really beautiful. It looks like lightning. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Gorgeous. Three of pentacles. Sodalite. 
I love this. Okay. Guys, give me more questions. I want I want to know things. Or you or you ask me a question if you want to ask. <laughs> yeah, you just went cute. <laughs> That, th this payday I'm ordering decks. Uh, well, okay. listen, both, and then put some money in reserve and wait a couple, wait, wait like eight, eight weeks to get the new, the new, um, the Oracle deck. You can probably, let's see, let's play a game. Let's do, let's do a card reading for the collective. Oh my God. Let's do it. Do you read tarot? Just for myself. Oh, come on. Are we doing this? I'm going to sling the cards down and you're going to help me. Okay. <laughs> because sometimes what I have to do, because like, if I get confused, and I'm going to ask all you guys in the audience to help. If I get confused on a card, especially if it's like a minor arcana card, and it's not coming to my mind, I'm going to ask you, what does it look like in the Rider Smith weight? And you're going to have to describe what the card looks like so I can reconnect it. Sometimes that just happens to me when I don't have a traditional Ryder Smith weight deck. I like lose the imagery because I don't remember what it was. And for me, I guess, I don't know if I'm a visual learner, but I do have context clues that I use. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes I use them if I don't have that Ryder Smith like blasting me in the face. So let's, let's do a reading for the collective based upon this eclipse energy that we're just coming out of. And let's let's define it to the next 30 days. Let's get real specific. Oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing here? And Kara's gonna help. And we're gonna see like, what do we still need to release? So like in light of the eclipse and the releasing that we did, what have we released? What do we still need help releasing? And what do we need to step into? So. What have, have we released? What do we still need help releasing? And what do we need help stepping into? I think the ADHD hits hard with me. So I have to keep <laughs> myself to so remember what I say. All right, let's see what we got. So what are we, what have we released? What are we still releasing? And what energy do we need to step into? Okay, side of the cross, let's go. Okay. What are we releasing is the Eight of Pentacles fluorite. Now, if I'm remembering, I hope I'm remembering this correctly. The Eight of Pentacles is the guy that planted the seeds and he's resting on his, like, hoe. <laughs> that's a tool, not a woman. Is that correct? Is that the card? I, I think that's the card. So, I believe okay. you're right. Okay. So, I think the energy that we're releasing is is that is is the energy of impatience that it isn't happening so a lot of the energy that i get from that eight of pentacles card is like we don't want to stop our work because like you think about like the pentacles it's all about like the creation it's all about the manifestation and so i'm wondering if like what we need to be releasing is the feeling that we're that like nothing is happening and keep in mind like where we are right now too like spring is sort of like getting into the more springy months where things are growing more right so like it's all happening but keep in mind like in the beginning of spring it's like all happening underground and you can't see it right but now it's like starting to burst forth so really we have to release the fact that like we didn't think anything was happening it was happening sort of like behind the scenes and it's about to sort of burst forward does that make sense yeah okay. i understand okay and, and then connecting with the energy of fluorite to keep us harnessing that energy and that momentum because fluorite is naturally cubic in structure it's organized into the mind it keeps us on task Focus. and yep. keeps us focused into what it is that we're looking to grow. What is it that we're looking to bring out of the ground? So releasing the fact that nothing's happening and having now walking into the expectation of it's going to start to grow, it's going to start to burst. Okay. So that's what we're, that's what we're like, sort of what we released and what we're moving into. And now, um, what we still need some help releasing, like what we really need to release that we haven't quite got there yet. I have, I have justice and amatrine, and that's interesting. Why would we need to re release justice? So it's interesting because like, what is justice? 
because the idea and the concept of justice really depends upon who you're asking. If like justice is between two people or two situations, it's really based upon the perspective of the person who's getting the justice enacted on them, mm -hmm. right? So, and like thinking about the stone ametrine, which is really this like beautiful stone of polarity because it has like the amethyst, which is like the spiritual, and then it has a citrine in it, which is like the action, which is really interesting in that it ties back to the Eight of Pentacles because then we're just talking about like being frustrated about things not happening and then bur bursting forth into happening. It's like this weighing, like, is it happening or is it not happening? So like, what do we what do we need help still releasing? Danielle said her divorce, yes, for you, definitely. Um, the notion of I think things in nature being, being like fair. Because nature isn't fair. Some, somebody's always eating and somebody's always getting eaten. In that duality for the for the macro universe, it's perfect because somebody like there it's there's that yin and yang, but sort of like realizing that sometimes the things that happen to us, even though they're unpreferred, are painful. But stop hanging on to those as like a badge of honor that you went through it. Like you have to release those things. Like if justice was served to you and like you paid some life's tuition, like, okay, like lick your paws. I'm like using your cat, like lick your paws and clean your face. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. And then what are the energies that we need to step into? Like, what are we being asked to sort of step into? Um, Okay, is the energy of the moon, is the energy of amethyst. So, how does that say it? The moon is an interesting card for me because, like, I don't, like, I love the imagery of the moon, like, my sore from medical neglect. Yes, right, okay, like, it happened to you, and it's unjust, but, like, okay, we have to like, we need, we like, we need to move, we need to move forward. People do need to be held accountable. Don't ever, don't ever, um, people need to be held accountable, but at some point, like it has to be like sort of wrapped up and like, we have to move on from it. Even if it still sucks is my point, because the only thing that we have to spend in our lives really is time. And if we preoccupy ourselves with, with wrongs that are done to us, we're spending our time in that way. And we have so many better things to be doing with ourselves. I'm really, 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 really conscious lately about the concept of the only thing we have to spend is time. And it's sort of pissing me off. <laughs> As it goes real fast. But, but back, back to the moon. Talk to, me about, talk to me about why you picked Amethyst for the moon. Because... because uh, intuition, of course, you need your intuition to guide you to what you need to be guided towards on that path. <laughs> so this makes sense because if we're talking about the moon as tapping into our intuition and also so thinking about the moon and its ever-changing faces, mm -hmm. right, and its connection to our emotions, what we're asked to do is really trust in the unseen and the changing, the changing face of things. Mm -hmm. And trust again, like it's it's all growing. It's growing, and sometimes it's growing underground and we can't see it, and sometimes it's growing and it's bursting forth. And the sunflower is like eight feet tall, right? So we have. To have faith that what we planted is going to grow and use our intuition to make those adjustments, use our intuition and our discernment to know like what are those lessons that change the way we move through life and what are those lessons where we learn them and it shapes us and we walk through lives as different people and then we sort of like have to use the sword of truth to like cut some shit away. <laughs> I don't know if I fucking said anything, but I said something. <laughs> It totally made sense to me, so. <laughs> Kara's on the payroll forever and always. <laughs> um, 
And then I guess we can't leave, we can't leave the, the affirmation deck out. So let's thank you for the heart. I'm I'm a very I'm a very amateurish reader as best at best, which is really frustrating because I got my first tarot deck in 1995. You'd think I'd be better at it by now. Oh my god. I can't believe I just admitted that out loud. But to in my defense, the deck, my very first deck is like I still can't read that deck. It's a beautiful deck. It's um the um Vertigo Vertigo Tarot deck released by DC comics based upon um the characters and the art of the sandman <laughs> oh my god i don't have that <laughs> yeah very um it's very dark and rachel pollock wrote the guidebook and it's beautiful but like it's very very dark and very hard to read and i feel like if you don't know like every comic in like the 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 vertigo dc comic sandman universe you're like who the hell is this and what does this mean so <laughs> I don't recommend, that's why we now recommend <laughs> Ryder Smith weight decks, you know, or something based upon it very first so you can be like, oh, um, you do have to come visit us when the weather is nicer and you could do like a deck signing. I would love to. Yeah, maybe like, cause you could, then you could bring all three because your, your Oracle deck will be done. That'll be so much fun. Um, I'm better than I think. Thank you so much. You oh, I appreciate are. That. <laughs> okay. So the crystal that's stepping forward to walk you through on this path for the next 30 days, you know, trusting our intuition, learning those lessons is Ocean Jasper. I choose to be joyful and grateful. My emotional well-being is at peace. Is it though, Ocean Jasper? Is my fucking emotional well-being at peace? Because after this fucking eclipse, it feels like my nerves are frayed <laughs> to start eating the Ocean Jasper. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Isn't this beautiful? How was your eclipse, by the way? Like, did you have any, like, did you have the eclipse doing eclipse shit for you? Because it was just like a party for us. Let me tell you. It just, it just got, it was super cloudy. Couldn't really see anything. So, and I was driving. Oh, no, we're talking about if you saw it. We just want to know if it fucked up your life. Like it was driving us. Oh, no. I mean, I was driving all day. So <laughs> nothing really exciting happened. Okay, when is the Oracle deck going to be done? I love my tarot deck. I'm going to get the affirmation deck soon. Thank you. <laughs> um, definitely uh, by next month, it will be up for pre-order. It's nice. in the middle of April. So, yeah, I'll probably put it up for pre-order by May 1st. That, that's exciting. Are you going to do any, like, pre-order specials? Oh, oh absolutely. Okay. <laughs> So oh, everybody has to make sure that you're you're following Kara so you get like all the details on the pre-order because pre-orders are so important because it just like gives everybody a good sense. Yeah. Of what yeah. I don't and even know. I, I don't know. I'm so afraid. Like, should I order like 500? Should I order a thousand? Should I order 5,000? Like how you don't know how it's going to go. So it's just a big gamble. It is. It's and it, listen, and I and I don't know. You know these these decks aren't inexpensive to produce. There's a lot of bells and whistles here, and you could have chosen to take a lot of the bells and whistles off of them, and they wouldn't look the same. They wouldn't be as beautiful. They wouldn't. They wouldn't speak the same way. They wouldn't read the same way. So, you know, I've gotten into this a couple times with people on TikTok in comments to set like why so expensive? Why so expensive? Because it's that much money to print these decks. And like even though even if you ordered five thousand, that's still such a small quantity compared to like what big book publishers are 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 ordering. It's like I try to explain to people is that it we're not you're not Penguin Random House. Yeah. You're not Simon and Schuster where they're like printing a bazillion things. But like, so like it's worth it. And also, let's call it what it is. Artists deserve to get paid for their work. Yeah. I mean, I took it took me since November to finish this Oracle deck and I'm I'm on the last card. I still gotta write the guidebook. I still gotta design the box. Like that took me days, months, weeks, like Yeah, hours and hours and hours of time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's so important to support small artists and independent makers you know 
they're creating things where, you know, if say like a bigger publisher picked this stick, this deck, I <laughs> this deck, this deck up, I guarantee you they'd be like, let's cut down on the cost. Let's take the hollow away. Let you know. So exactly. And I don't want I that's the, that's the why I want to keep it the way it is and I don't want to take on a publisher even if they were to message me I'd probably say no because I don't yeah. want to forgo all of these details like I picked these for a reason <laughs> and the details are beautiful they really are I would have paid more they're 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 gorgeous they're worth they really are <laughs> worth every penny and and you want to know what exactly in line price wise with other decks with similar you know, treatment. So it's not like you're, it, it's not unreasonable. The people that think it's unreasonable aren't collectors or probably just don't have a lot of tarot decks or aren't, or Oracle decks and aren't educated about, you know, what the costs yeah. are. And, and, and I, of course, I researched my competition. I researched other shops that are selling their own decks. Like, I didn't just pull a number out of my hat, you know? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's smart. That's what you have to do. That's so that's actually that's that's really smart and really reasonable. And I think I, I think they're they're priced very well. And you know, we've sold quite a bit of them. So like again, like I don't think I don't think it's a problem. I do get annoyed though when people are like, Oh, they don't know art. No, a lot of people don't know art and everybody thinks that they could do everything, but nobody does it. <laughs> they are, they're worth every bit. Are you gonna do stars on the um on the Oracle? Something different <laughs> oh my god excited. I don't, so excited is it coming in, best part. in gold and silver or just one colorway we're doing two colorways in one deck <laughs> this guys it's good two colorways one deck something special oh my gosh this i don't want to give it away yet, no don't it's... give it away it has to be a surprise it has to be a surprise it's so exciting well, thank you so much for spending time with me tonight. I really appreciate it. It's so nice to talk to you. You do, when it gets nice out, you have to come to the shop when the new deck releases and we'll do like a, a big party and a deck signing and we'll have to get you like beautiful gold and silver markers so you can sign, sign your boxes. It'll be so exciting. And you guys, make sure you're, following Kara because you have to keep up to date with this new deck being launched. I am so excited to see it. If you do not yet have Crystal Struck Tarot or Crystal Affirmations, I don't know how many we have. Kara obviously has them. We're going to order more for her. And I just need you to know, like, what she sells for is what we sell for. Like, it's standard manufacturing, like, standard pricing. Like, we follow her lead, whatever she charges, what we charge. And we just are so happy to have you on tonight and support you in this way in our shop. So thank you so much for having me on. I had so much fun. So much fun. Thanks. Have a good night. Bye. Bye guys. Bye.